Welcome to Breaking Lines Badly. Hey, I'm Eric, and a, a question I got the other day um, under a video on probably something completely different was around how to do line breaks. Um, and uh, line breaks are kind of interesting um, because there's several ways we can do it in BC, and um, there's also a built-in way and sometimes you have to consider who you're talking with uh, to deal with line breaks um, and actually let's start there um, so here is a Wikipedia page uh, about new line and here we can see that depending on you know what kind of system you're on if you're on a Unix like system uh, we have a line feed. So, so remember this goes back to this goes back to uh, matrix printers and, and typewriters and, and so on. Um, so there's there's two operations uh, that in in those days in in the mechanical printing days um, there's the there's the line feed meaning that we move the paper up. Uh, and then there's the carriage return, which means that we take the whatever print head device and we move it back to the first character. Um, and those things could happen independently. So on a printer, you could print something online and then you can do a carriage return. And you stay on the same line and then you print something else on top of it. So you can do like f fancy printing by actually overprinting a line. Um, you could also, you know, st stay at the end and then go go down a feed and but not do a, a uh, not do a line feed and then you could print backwards. Some printers could do that. So, so there's lots of ways that this could happen independently. But all those things because going way way back uh, before we had monitors we only had there you know you had teletype so you typed on something and 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 the response came out of the, on a printer so when the monitors and, and terminals and so on were were introduced the the concepts from the printer was kind of carried over to uh, to to the screen um but why do it in a single way all over the world if and all over different systems if we can do it in separate different many different ways and and you can see here that that unix uh, systems kind of only worked with line feed so we had a line feed and uh, it was a decimal value 10 and uh, escape sequences backslash n if you ever were writing something with like uh, c or something like that you 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 will see that um which is why that if you load up a in notepad you load up a a text file that originated on linux or uh, unix or something like that you open it up in, in notepad and windows and there's no line breaks because on Windows, it's two characters. It's cache return first. So we move the head back and then we do a line feed. Oops, Let's see if I can click that right. Then we do a line feed on Windows. Um, so if we load up a Unix file, there's never a cache return. And and on Windows, it has to be those two, two, two characters in this order in order to be a valid line feed in, in, a, in a file. And then there's a couple of, of a weird ones. Let's we can mention those also. If you were working on, you know, a Commodore, uh, or uh, the, you know, there's a ZX stuff up here, then they only use character turn. So that's that's only 13. And 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 the rest of the list is kind of called uh, mainframes. Uh, and the the ZX81 had its own character. And then there's like Acorn, uh, you know, where ARM processors came from, that when they 
our spooling output, they did it the reverse order. So nine feet carries your turn. Uh, but anyway, let's let's focus on, on 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 this. So if we go into Business Central, then as as I, I said at the beginning, there is actually a built-in uh, way of, of handling this. So we have a message here and. Um, uh, hello world with line feed. Let's just verify that I can actually publish this app uh, because there might be some, I might need to clean up. Uh, let's see if it, no, <laughs> we are in business. This is very good. Uh, so in this case, we just get a message. On a, on a single line, hopefully. Let's see if we get a lot of messages because this is my dog image with a million apps. App published. There you go. Oh, that's, an, that's not an app with some colors. If you haven't, if you haven't seen the, the one where we're actually changing colors on, on the, the changing styles, that's because you perhaps not a subscriber, so. Uh, Join, join, uh, join the, the long list of subscribers and, and then you won't miss whenever I do something fancy with colors again. Anyway, so let's say we want to create a line break in this. There's a built-in thing that is very, very old uh, in the world of notion that a backslash is a line break. Um, so now it's in two lines. So the backslash is actually a line break. This is kind of weird. And, and let's see if we can break this. Um, so if I go back here and then let's see what happens. Um, let's see if we do this. So if I do percentage one and then I pass the backslash as a parameter to message. See, so now it's not a uh, line break. Um, and this sometimes is what people get confused about that suddenly line break doesn't work uh, apart from the fact that I think there's 21.4 or something like that had a a line break error where it, this didn't always work uh, the normal way but in this case the line break is interpreted when this one is is processed not when when all the substitution has been made so if we let's uh, let's create a text variable here. I'll just create it in one character to begin with, so we know. That. So what if? And 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 you probably know this by now. So here is more or less the same thing. So this should not work either, right? Because we're instead of passing a constant as a parameter, we're just passing as a as a, a variable. That's this does not work. But what if we change this guy? So instead of using the built-in backslash, we tell that this is character 10. So going back to this one. So now we're saying that hey this is character 10. Uh, so can Business Central read a a Unix formatted string, a Unix formatted line break, line feed? It can. So 10 is now interpreted as a line feed. But what if this was instead of one, it was two? And then let's go back and make sure that we look. So we need 13 first and then 10. So this has to be 13 
a character two, wow, has to be 10. That also worked. What about 13 alone? What happens if this is 13 alone? Oops, let me stop the debug up before I start it again. So 13 alone did not work. Uh, so you could say that in reality, it looks like Business Central is totally ignoring 13 and just going with 10. Uh, um, but let's say that you, you're building files. Um, so so you're, you're building up something that needs to be downloaded as a file and you need to include, you need to create lines. Then if you know the receiver is a, a, a Windows-based uh, machine, you could append this. If you know it's, it's, if, if the receiver is a Unix-based system, then you can just do a 10. So you could do, you know, line one, texty, line, line two, uh, text, and then total is also a text here. So we could go and say, um, line one equal Eric line. Whoa, line two equal. How about YouTube there? And then total equal line one plus line feet plus line two plus line feet. And that was line two. So this way we could build up line feeds in the uh, in the text. But if you get data like this in again, then we could actually go and say um, create one called lines, which is a list of text. Wow. So we could say that lines equal total dot split and let the separator be our line feed thing. Uh, message, and then we go lines dot get two. How about that? So we should get line number two now. There's a whole video on the split function, I think. So we get line number two here. Um, you could use this also to convert. If you have something you get in as Unix and you need to send it uh, somewhere else as Windows and whatever, it's quite easy. Like, be aware. So here's the thing, be aware. Just that's a kind of a bonus thing that, that we told this to split. Um, let's see if I get the debugger. I do get the debugger. So lines has three elements now. So we said line plus line feet, line one plus line feet, plus line two plus line feet. And then we told it to split on line field. So there's actually a empty line here. So we can see that lines, there are three of them and the, the third one is blank. Uh, so just be aware of when you when you're working with, with split that if you have the separator also at the end that's what's gonna happen. Anyway, that was uh, that was line breaks and uh, new lines and line feed whatever you you want to call it. Um, hope that helped. I can I can look in 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 my my simple object designer app. I'm writing code uh, and I'm building, you know, constructing code uh, and uh, I need to output code files. I need to output .al files that, that eventually goes through the whole thing to become uh, an app that is working, uh, but it also needs to produce uh, code that looks nice. So uh, 
I have a, a global LF uh, variable that it gets appended in, in a lot of places to make sure that the code looks nice with line breaks and so on. Anyway, uh, I am sure you can find more AL hacking in this video. Go check it out. And I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.